Summary of a Simple Heart by Gustave Flaubert During the 19th century in France, Felicite Barrette is a housemaid who lives in the town of pont leveque She gives her mistress her whole attention and works extremely hard to fulfill her duties. Felicite works for Madame Aubain, whose husband died and left her with a lot of debt. To get rid of these bills, Madame Aubain sells all of her valuable things and moves to a smaller house with her two kids, Paul and Virginie. Others think Felicite looks older than her years because she is very careful and works hard. The next part of the story goes back in time and talks about Felicite's childhood. Her parents died when she was a child, and after they died, she was split up from her sisters. A farmer takes her in but doesn't care for her, hits her, and says she stole money from him. She moves in with a different farmer after that event and gets along well with them. She meets a guy named Theodore at a town dance when she is 18 years old. Theodore persistently follows her, even though she is shy and hesitant at first. She finally falls in love with him. Soon after asking Felicite to marry him, Theodore tells her that his parents paid someone else to serve in the military instead of him, and he's afraid that they'll be caught. However, when Felicite goes to see him again, she finds that he has married a rich widow to avoid being drafted again, leaving her behind. Feeling terrible, Felicite quits her job and goes to pont leveque where she meets Madame Aubain and gets a job as a cook. After moving to live with the Aubains, Felicite quickly gets used to her new habits. She also loves spending time with Madame Aubain's children. One night, Madame Aubain and her kids are having a dinner on their family farm in Jeffosses when an angry bull comes up to them. The family is saved by Felicite, who hits the bull with clumps of dirt. People talk a lot about how brave Felicite was during the event, but she doesn't really believe it. Virginie Aubain's health gets worse because she is so scared about what happened. The family doctor, Monsieur Poupar, suggests that they go to Trouville, a town on the French coast, so that Virginie can take a bath in the sea. The Aubains and Felicite stop at the Liebards' house on their way to Trouville. The Liebards live on the Aubains' land in Tooks and have worked for the Aubains for many generations. When the Aubains get to Trouville, they take a relaxing vacation by the sea. One afternoon, the wife of a fisherman comes up to Felicite on the beach. It turns out that the woman is one of her sisters, whom she was split from as a child. Natasha Leroux, Barrette, Felicite's sister, is now married and has three kids. Madame Aubain doesn't trust the Leroux family because she thinks they are trying to take advantage of Felicite's kindness. Felicite is excited about seeing her family again and has even started buying them things because they are poor. The family soon goes back to pont leveque and Paul leaves home to go to school. Felicite is sad that Paul is leaving, but her thoughts quickly turn to Virginie's catechism, which she goes to every day but doesn't take part in. Being with Virginie makes her deeply moved by the Bible verses and sacred images she sees. Even though she never had an official religious education, Virginie's catechism helps her learn about Catholic traditions and start following the faith. During Virginie's first communion, she even has a spiritual experience that she will never forget. Madame Aubain decides soon after this event to send Virginie to an Ursuline religious school so that she can get a better education. When Virginie goes, Felicite starts to feel lonely, and Madame Aubain gives her permission for her nephew Victor to come visit. They get to know each other well and enjoy being with each other. Victor finally decides to take a job at sea for two years, and Felicite runs ten miles to say goodbye. But she just misses the chance to say goodbye to him as his ship leaves the port. Madame Aubain worries more and more about Virginie's health. When Felicite talks about how worried she is that Victor hasn't been in touch, Madame Aubain says that her daughter is more important than any scrounger like Felicite's nephew. Felicite finds out quickly that her nephew has died, which breaks her heart. Virginia Aubain dies soon after Victor, and Felicite doesn't get to say goodbye to her while she's dying. Both Madame Aubain and Felicite are very sad about Virginie's death. A few years go by with not much happening until the Baron de Larsonnière, who used to be a consul in America, comes to pont with his family. 
The Baron's family becomes friendly with Madame Aubain very quickly. Around this time, Paul Aubain starts drinking too much and fails to get a job. Madame Aubain pays off his bills from living a lavish lifestyle. Madame Aubain and Felicite are still sad about Virginie's death. They give each other a comforting hug after putting Virginie's things out in the air in her old bedroom. She feels even closer to Madame Aubain after that, and she serves her with even more loyalty than before. As she gets older, Felicite continues to help the poor people in her neighborhood. She takes care of many poor people, including cholera victims, Polish refugees, and a man named Kamish who is poor. The Baroness gives Madame Aubain her pet parrot when the Baron de Larsenier gets a promotion and his family is about to leave pont -Levec. But Madame Aubain gives the parrot to Felicite because she thinks it is a bother. People who come to the Aubain house also seem to find the parrot boring and annoying, but Felicite grows very attached to her pet, a parrot named Lulu. Felicite loses track of Lulu one day after taking him outside for some fresh air. She spends the whole day running around town looking for him and finally finds him back in the Aubain's yard. Unfortunately, Felicite ends up going deaf because of the consequences of her tonsils from running for so long in the cold. When Lulu finally dies, it makes Felicite so sad that Madame Aubain suggests she have a taxidermist stuff the bird. She does this, and she is so worried that the parrot won't get to the ship safely that it's going to take that she walks miles to give the bird's body to the ship's captain safely. After six months, Felicite gets Lulu in the mail and hangs him on the wall of her bedroom with her other favorite things. At the same time, Paul Aubain gets a job at the registry office and marries a co-worker's daughter. During this time, Madame Aubain finds out that Monsieur Bourice, her close friend and property manager, has killed himself. She also finds out that he had an affair that gave birth to an unnatural kid and that he cheated on her for years. The news of this upsets Madame Aubain so much that she gets pneumonia and dies. For the rest of her life, Felicite lives alone in Madame Aubain's house as it falls apart because she is very sad about her lady. As Felicite nears the end of her life, she stops looking at Lulu while she prays and starts praying directly to the toy parrot, which she calls idolatrous. Madame Simon, who used to run the food store in town, takes care of Felicite as she nears the end of her life. Felicite's best day of the year is Corpus Christi, so she has Madame Simon put Lulu on the altar at the Aubain's house. She asked the local priest to accept this addition. As the priest and the rest of the Corpus Christi parade come to the house to bless the altar, Felicite listens to them sing in peace as she dies. She thinks she sees a huge parrot hovering above her head as the heavens open up to receive her in her last moments. About the author. Gustave Flaubert was born in Rouen, France. His father was a surgeon at the hospital there. He liked reading books when he was younger, but he wasn't very dedicated to his studies, according to reports. In his teens, Flaubert met and fell in love with an older woman called Eliza Schlesinger. She was the inspiration for his first famous work, Memoirs of a Madman. Flaubert went to law school in Paris in 1841, but he dropped out because of his seizures and his general dislike of the city. Flaubert had seizures during his childhood and had to spend a lot of time at home because of them. However, he was able to travel with his close friend Maxime Ducamp for many months when he was a young adult. He and his friend went to Greece and Egypt in the 1840s, which gave Flaubert ideas for his early work. Flaubert went back to France in 1850, moved back into the house his family owned, and started writing Madame Bovary, the book that made him famous. It took him six years to finish. The French government sued Flaubert's distributor because they thought the book was inappropriate, especially because it talked about cheating. The government's case, on the other hand, failed in the end, and Flaubert went on to write more books, satires, and a play called Le Candidat. French author Flaubert had a lot of success when Madame Bovary was published as a full book instead of as a series of short stories. He died at age of 58. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.